Hey there, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another fine episode here at the Sci-Fi Network. And this is our inaugural episode featuring comic reviews with myself, Anthony. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one Marvel book, one DC book, and then one uh, something else. We'll see. First we have issue is Black Widow, uh, issue 12 here. Now, if you've been reading Black Widow, you can tell just exactly what they're going for as a feel. Uh, they're kind of getting back to more spy espionage feels, Black Widow goes, as opposed to the big bombastic superhero stuff that she's kind of known for. Um, this issue here really takes that kind of problem that that has. It's like, how can you be an Avenger, but also be known as a sort of, you know, assassin, spy, all that fun stuff. And pretty much there's a news report going on questioning whether Black uh, Widow is a hero or a villain or whatever she is. And uh, while this is going on, all the Avengers are watching and Black Widow is actually on a mission at the um, somewhere in the desert with the Howling Commandos. And so we kind of see a bit of her perspective and what she considers, quote unquote, a good day and how the world is viewing her and where her character is really going. Um, the art, of course, is really beautiful. Um, if you, Like I said, if you've been reading Black Widow, this is exactly what you've been wanting and it's probably the best issue in my opinion because it really takes the Marvel Universe as a whole and focuses on Black Widow but it's still about Black Widow and who she is as a character. Um, you know before the this book had come out I wasn't really a huge Black Widow fan personally. I enjoyed her for in the films you know Iron Man 2 and Avengers and especially in Winter Soldier but until this point um, I hadn't really taken too much of a look at Black Widow uh, but this book has really done it for me. I'm a huge Black Widow fan now, and I can't recommend this enough. So Black Widow, issue 12, it's a great issue to read. Um, I'd recommend picking up every issue of the series. Moving on to the next one, we have uh, Justice League, issue 36. This month is uh, all about the Legos. We've got Lego variants for all your favorite books. Uh, this one's a lot of fun because it's the regular New 52 setup and nice fun Lego version. I've yet to play Lego Batman 3, but I'm definitely wanting to. Currently caught up in Smash Brothers, I'm not going to lie, so it's... I mean, come on, Smash Brothers, what are you going to do? As for this issue, it's the next issue in the current arc, uh, basically about the Amazo virus. Now, what is the Amazo virus? Well, we're learning about what it is in this issue. Um, in the last issue, we had Lex Luthor, and of course, if you don't know at this point, he is a member of the Justice League after the events of Forever Evil, where he helped defeat the other world Justice League and pretty much saved the entire planet. Because of this now, people are targeting Lex Luthor, and uh, a virus has been set out into the world. And it only affects humans. So, people like, you know, Batman, Lex Luthor, um, the Aquaman, the Flash, anyone that's either part human or any signs of, of Earth in them, they are falling to this disease, which can give you superhuman abilities, and then pretty much destroy your entire body and kill you. Uh, this issue has a lot of really cool interactions between Superman and Batman. Superman being this character, obviously, that is not from Earth, so he's completely immune to the disease. And because of that, he's able to pretty much do what he can. Batman's also um, got this, like, super hazmat suit that he's using right now, and uh, using what he can to help stop the disease with Lex Luthor, as well as Wonder Woman, who is also not human because she's a goddess and all that fun stuff. With that... Um, like I said, best thing about it is the Superman-Batman interaction. Um, also Lex Luthor, basically, with these past few issues and this issue uh, in particular, we've had Lex Luthor mainly under the spotlight because, obviously, he's one of the most well-known supervillains on the planet, and now he's a member of the Justice League. So the heroes, the, the people of Earth, the ones, they're all really focusing on him and seeing what is his play? You know, what is his big scheme? Is there a big scheme? Is he really good? You know, what exactly is he trying to pull here? And Lex Luthor and all this is just saying, I'm just doing what I can as a hero. So if you're enjoying, you know, Jeff Johns on Justice League, I, I definitely say this is a really good issue. One of my personal favorites of the week. Um, Jason Favak, who is the artist, does really great with the interior. Really apocalyptic, you know, all that sort of stuff. Really, really cool. Um, if you're not on the Justice League right now, maybe the first few issues uh, back when the New 52 started really didn't have you. I'd say definitely read it. It has gotten so much better since its original inception, and it's Jeff Johns, what can I say? So that's it for the main two Marvel and DC books that I would highly recommend for this. Um, now the next book we're going to go to is a bit special because it is uh, particularly a graphic novel. And for those of you who don't know, there's a difference between graphic novel and trades. Trades are whenever you collect these single issues and put them all in one big book. A graphic novel, on the other hand, is a book that stands on its own, is not single issues ever, and it's just a solid book released. So Watchmen 
graphic novel, Justice League volume whatever the heck, that's a trade. Just want to put that out there because I know there's a lot of confusion. This right here is a graphic novel. Uh, DC has this line known as Earth One. This started way, way back uh, with the book Superman Earth One by uh, JMS. And uh, they're almost treated like movies. They're really, really far apart as far as when they come out. Um, I know volumes one and two of Superman are about three years apart. And uh, I want to say volume two of Superman came out in 2012. And volume three is coming out next year. So you can kind of see that the way they treat these books is really big gaps in between. Why that is exactly, I'm not too sure. But the main reason this book exists, uh, the Earth One titles, is to give a somewhat updated, modern take on characters. If you guys remember the you know Ultimate Universe for Marvel, it's basically this for DC. So you have characters like Superman, Batman, uh, Teen Titans in this uh, instance. You have these characters in a more modern, updated setting, but it's still the characters that you like or for the most part. This one right here I was very excited for because it's Jeff Lemire writing. If you read any of his Green Arrow stuff or maybe some of his Justice League Dark stuff, you'll understand why this was a really cool book. That being said, I, I'm a little twisted on it. I can't say that I hate it, but I can't say that I love it. For the most part, the characters act like they normally do. I mean, Cyborg acts like Cyborg. I mean, Terra acts like Terra. Uh, you know, Beast Boy acts like Beast Boy. It's just an so much is packed into this short book, and that's the main problem with Earth One titles, is that, as you can see, it's a very, very thin book for what it is. And so it's, it's tough to, you know, really put down some money on this. I would say if you're a Teen Titans fan and you need to know what's going on with them in another universe, Earth One, uh, I'd say pick it up. If you're not too interested, and maybe you just like the Superman one, or you just like the Batman one, or whatever, um, I'd say maybe skip it, just because it's a, there's some things that are a little tough to swallow. Like I said, for the most part, characters act like they should, but Lemire takes a lot of things in interesting ways in a very, very short allotted time. So, yeah, I really, it's tough. It really is tough because I like this book, but I don't love it or hate it. They do some interesting things with Slade Wilson as well, which is kind of another reason I'm teetering on whether I like it so much because I am personally a very big Deathstroke fan. But I mean, all in all, sure. It's got purple. So that, that's kind of the, I was really attached to it because it's got a nice purple cover. So, I don't know about this one. Just wanted to bring it up because it is new this week and uh, it's, it's Earth One, which is kind of a big deal in the DC universe whenever they release books. Because like I said, they kind of treat them like movies. Whether that's a good thing, I don't really know. And that is it for the comic reviews. Um, you know, in the comments below, tell us what you read and what you like. I mean, there are definitely a lot of titles I didn't cover, and that's really because I want to give you guys a little bit of tidbits on what I personally read, but I want to know what you guys read. You know, what did you guys think of all the different books that are coming out? There's some books I didn't mention, like Axis and Daredevil and, you know, all that stuff. So tell us, share with your friends, like the video, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, this is Anthony at the Sci-Fi Network, signing off.